right, it is 2016 and now for another winter project. So let's get started. This is going to be a, uh, a Christmas present. And uh, there was a particular uh, present or design that um, was uh, interesting to me uh, as a project. And it was actually a, uh, a wood project that involved uh, a lot of landscaping work. Has a few challenges. Overall, it should be pretty easy. We'll see how it goes. Um, there are a few types of wood out there that would be great for this kind of project. And uh, looking at the wood that they offer, typically at Home Depot, uh, pine, oak, poplar, and possibly cedar as well. And I thought that those types of wood would have um, the best kind of grain structure, best kind of uh, uh, color contrast that would be great for this kind of project. Um, the reason why these types of wood would be great for this type of project is um, the, the grains, the, the grain uh, sizing, the grain spacing, um, and uh, for in particular popular here has no grain. So for the the white caps on top of the mountains, that would be great for popular. Let's plan this out and see how big this portrait is going to be. Another thing that I wanted to do, uh, the thing that I wanted to learn on this project, is um, how to make wood look old. So what I learned online was you can get this wire brush attachment, and what you do is you rough up the wood using a wire brush attachment. And what that does is when it spins, it takes out all the the lighter material here and creates uh, valleys and the harder material is left behind um, all the, the grain through here. So this is just a test piece and we'll see uh, what it looks like. Here's pine, softest of the three. You definitely see the scratch marks in there. Move over to poplar. You can still see the scratch marks, but they're a little less. And then over to oak. Here you can barely see anything. So on this side, I just ran over with uh, the abrasive wheel. On this side is nothing. So you can barely tell any difference in there. So to make sure that all these pieces are perfectly perpendicular to each other and have no gaps in between each piece, you have to make sure that each side is completely straight. And normally you, what you would have is uh, something called a jointer, um, but I don't have a tool like that. And I, I built something here that I've learned online on YouTube that basically does the same thing as a jointer. So. Um, what a jointer really does, I kind of illustrated here, um, this green would be a board, um, and I exaggerated the waviness on the side, 
to illustrate the point here. So on the jointer you have a flat surface here and a step up uh, maybe about a millimeter or maybe even less from, from this surface. And in between those steps there is a blade that comes out and takes away material. So whenever the board is traveling across the blade, all of this waviness gets chopped off. And what you're left with, what you're left with is this straight edge over here. And so what I've made is, is something similar to that. So the raised edge is this uh, plexiglass piece that I have here. And then the blade sticks out just a tiny bit to catch and cut off the rough edges. So disappointingly, I'm running into the same problem I've ran into in the past, which is basically kickback. Uh, what kickback is, is when uh, the board goes through the blade of the table saw and catches on the blade and then the blade throws the board back into my face. Um, so that's pretty dangerous and the reason why I get kickback is because, I'm not sure if you can see it here. Um, the the board when I start cutting it it starts relieving itself of stress and the board starts skewing and grabbing the blade and kicks it back um, as it as it grips on the way up so I think the only thing I can do at this point is to chop this into a few different pieces and um, see if I can manage this in smaller sections. Aftermath. Got a lot of sawdust all over the place. A lot of scrap wood pieces. All the corner cuts. And a lot of sawdust around the miter saw. Gotta clean this up. And here is the final piece. Tomorrow we'll stain and polyurethane. What I was thinking about doing was maybe doing uh, maybe a dark brown or a, uh, a darker kind of forcey color on here. Um, for the oak, I was thinking about using the uh, the red oak finish that I have um, upstairs in um, uh, on the wine rack. Um, for the background. I was thinking about doing uh, like a light gray to really contrast uh, the white uh, snow peaks. Um, taking the uh, the black finish, the ebony finish, uh, thinning it out a little bit with paint thinner. I've never really done that before, but um, we'll see how, how gray I can get it. Um, as you can see, I have some chopsticks on there um, to uh, use as uh, stir sticks. So the color test is complete. 
some interesting findings here. Um, so here is the uh, plaque finish with uh, basically half plaque finish, half um, paint thinner. You can tell that it's it's pretty light, pretty gray. There's a quick wipe. And here it is without the paint thinner. Um, it is a little bit darker, so um, I think I'll be going with the paint thinner way of doing things. That's a, that's a good gray. Here is the red oak finish. Um, here I have, I think, two layers of stain on there. It looks pretty good. Here I have the dark walnut. So here, this one, um, the, the harder grain is very light compared to the, the dark background in between. Um, here is the, the brown. Um, this uh, doesn't bring out the highlights and the grain as much, but it is a brown color. So if we put this next to the, the dark walnut, you kind of see the difference here. pretty nicely. The red oak is turning out pretty well here. Still a little shiny, still a little wet. Uh, the middle mountain is going to be the province, the, the brown stain. And then the mountain to the right will be the, the dark walnut. I broke down and I uh, painted white the poplar. Um, looking at the picture, it does seem that uh, it's very white, and it's what stands out in this uh, this entire landscape. And at the top, here is the uh, the gray old wood looking sky. day and you can see that the polyurethane dried up pretty well it's a little shiny on the oak and you can barely tell on the pine here um, this thing is pretty heavy it's about 25 to 30 pounds and uh, it might be a little difficult to hang on a wall because of that um, so another idea was to make this into a coffee table 
Um, if so, then I would suggest uh, putting a few more layers of uh, this type of polyurethane on top. As you can see, we are finally finished. I uh, trimmed the outer edge using oak, routered a nice edge here, and stained it black. My uh, mitering skills still need a little work. As you see, there's a little bit of gap there. That's probably my uh, my biggest skill I need to improve upon lately. But overall, it looks pretty good. Thanks for watching.